Hey, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another tutorial on Motion Squared. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again to watch. And uh, today we are going to take a look at how to create this fluid morph effect. I have here just a few splines I prepared before the tutorial. It's just uh, numbers 1 through 2, 5. Um, but uh, you can have any kind of spline uh, that you may be working with. So, you know, maybe you might have uh, two different logos and you want to morph between the two. Um, you could also morph between two lines of text and so on. As long as it is some kind of uh, spline, you should be able to do um, the morph effect uh, with the techniques I'm about to show you right now. So, let's uh, get a sphere. Let's set the radius to 10 and I'll set the type to icosahedron. I'm going to set the segments down to 10, which makes it look a little bit edgy and sharp. But uh, when we render, it still renders perfect because of this control right here. Okay. I'm going to go to MoGraph and get a cloner. And let's drop our sphere into this. And in the cloner attributes, let's set the mode to object. And uh, we're going to use the first spline as our object. So now these spheres are being cloned onto the the one spline here. Now you can see the distribution is um, completely wrong. We want this to be equally distributed along the the one. So I will set the distribution from count to even. And uh, now I can just adjust the count to see how many I I want. I think uh, 12 is a good starting point. But maybe I will just uh, lower the radius of the sphere. Something like 8 should be fine. Uh, that's still too large. Let's go for maybe 7.5. And uh, these are just about touching. And um, that's fine. Okay, so here is how you do the morph animation from one spline to the next. We are going to be using the spline effect here. And uh, let's make sure this is applied onto our cloner. And uh, if we go back to the spline effect, under the effector tab, uh, under spline here, we want to drag in the number that we want to morph into, or the spline that we want to morph our first number two. So we want to go to two. So let's uh, drag this uh, under the spline link box right here. And uh, as soon as I do that, you're going to see that the clones are now going to be mapped onto the second spline. Now, if this isn't working, it's probably because you have not put the uh, spline effector into the effector section of your cloner. So you may want to double check that. Okay, um, that looks fine. And uh, the way we morph from one to the next is by animating this uh, strength value here in the effector tab of our spline effector. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, do that. I will first of all just increase the uh, my timeline here from uh, 3 seconds to 5. And I will go to 1 second. And I will set my uh, first keyframe. So if I just uh, hold control, I can uh, click this, move forward 10 frames, and then I will set this to 100%. And then I will hold control and click again to set the next keyframe. So now we have this. It goes from, um, from 1 to 2. Now... Uh, you can see that, um, you know, the spline which makes up the number two is, um, it's a lot longer than the spline uh, that we had for just the number one. And uh, what this is, um, what's happened now is that there's, a, there's big gaps between my clones. We don't have enough to fill out the entire length of the spline, so we end up with this huge spaces. Um, but obviously we don't want that. We want them to be tightly packed. So what we're going to do then is to just animate the count as it transitions from one clone 
I mean from one spline to the other. So if we go back to exactly uh, frame 30, which is where we started the, the morph animation, we want to set a keyframe on the count here. And then if we move forward to 10 frames when the morph is complete, we can then start to increase the number of clones we have until the gap is closed. So something like maybe 21 should be fine. And I can set a keyframe. So now what's happening is as this animates from the shorter one spline to the much longer two spline, the particle count will increase and maintain the narrow gap between each clone. But as you can see, it looks very rough and you can actually see the new clones being sort of birthed into the scene. And it looks very jagged and uh, not very smooth. So here is where we're gonna apply the delay effector to solve this problem. So if we go to our cloner, uh, with it selected, we're gonna go to MoGraph Effector and get the delay effector. And uh, we wanna set the mode from blend to spring. And if I just uh, play this through, you can now see that the way that those new particles or those new clones come in is uh, not as noticeable and just in general, the animation looks um, a little nicer and flows a little better. Okay, I can uh, increase the strength to maybe 65, just to exaggerate that sort of bounce or spring effect. And uh, that's essentially how you get the animation. Okay, what we wanna do next now is to do the rest of the uh, numbers. We wanna morph from two to three, from three to four, and from four to five. And uh, the way we're gonna do this is by simply adding more of these um, spline effectors. So let's first of all just rename our first spline effector here to be say one, two, two, because we're gonna have a lot of these and we wanna know which spline effector is doing which morph. So we're gonna go to um, the MoGraph menu and let's get uh, another spline effector and let's rename this two two three and uh, let's just uh, arrange this correctly in our object manager just so it's easy to track where everything is so we're gonna um, go to the effectors tab of the cloner and uh, we want to drag in the two to three spline effector and we just want to make sure that it is after the first spline effector but before the delay effector the delay effector needs to have the same effect on all the previous um sort of over all the previous effectors so we can actually turn this off for now um, but it needs to be executed after all of the morphing animations have been executed okay so we're going to go to the two to three um spline effector and uh, under the spline link box, we want to drag in the number we want to go to. So we are currently at two, so we want to go to three. And uh, that's going to change right away. And now if I sort of rewind back to frame zero, you can see that it looks very strange. And, you know, we've lost the animation now from one to two. Uh, three is sort of already there to begin with. And then this strange thing happens where you know, those particles, you know, increase in number and we have the number three. Um, so what you have to do then is to animate this in a way that makes sense. So at uh, two seconds, this is when we want the strength of this two to three spline effector to kick in and morph the two into a three. As it was uh, just a second ago, you know, this was already on 100% strength at frame zero and uh you know all the particles just jumped to three but uh, we don't want that so let's go to two seconds and let's uh, bring this strength back down to zero and set a keyframe move forward 10 frames and set the strength to 100 and then set a keyframe so now if we play this back from the beginning we have one to two and then two to three like that 
So we're gonna move on and uh, do uh, three, two, four. I'm just gonna skip to when I've done the last one because I'm sure by now you get the the process. Okay, so I have uh, done the transition from four to five as well, and uh, now all the animation is uh, complete. Um, we can now go in here and just uh, refine, uh, you know, the gap problem. It uh, keeps occurring each time we basically morph from one number to the next. So we corrected it from one to two. Let's uh, do the same from uh, two to three. Let's uh, set a keyframe for the account at uh, two seconds. Move forward 10 frames and you can see the gaps have uh, increased uh, because the spline which makes up the number three is um, is longer than the one that makes up number two. So we're gonna just increase the count to something like uh, 24, uh, maybe just uh, 23 will be fine. And I will set a keyframe here. I'm gonna move forward to three seconds, and this is when it starts to morph to number four. And uh, actually, here I think the gap stays the same. So, you know, the length of this four spline must be very, very similar to the length of the three spline. So we can uh, ignore this and uh, move on to when it goes from uh, four to five. And here too, it's almost. Uh, exactly the same. So I'm not going to bother with uh, with this, um, but um, there was definitely an issue from one to two and from three, um, from two to three. Okay, I'm going to go to the cloner here and let me re-enable the delay effector. And uh, let's just uh, watch this through from the beginning to the end to see what we are getting. Okay, that looks um, quite good. Okay, I'm just gonna clean up my scene here a little bit. I'm gonna just uh, group all of my splines into one folder and uh, call them splines. And, uh, you know, I'll group all the effectors into a null object and call these uh, effectors. Right, and I'm going to just uh, duplicate the cloner and uh, let's call the first one cloner main and uh, let's call the second cloner secondary and uh, what we're gonna do then is uh, on this secondary cloner we're gonna go to MoGraph effector and add a random effector and I'm gonna leave uh, the default settings as they are uh, but I am going to go into the sphere here and just lower the size to something like maybe just three. And uh, what this will do is create this uh, second set of uh, particles which move um, as the main particles move as well. I think uh, the movement is probably too much though. I'm going to go in here and uh, adjust uh, maybe this down to just 25, 25 and 25. And I will also randomize the scale. I will go to uniform scale and uh, set this value to say maybe 0.5. So now they're all different sizes and uh, they look quite interesting. It's just another way to add a little bit more to your scene to uh, make it look more interesting. I'm also going to go to the um, uh, same secondary cloner and add a second random effector. I'm going to go to this uh, second uh, random effector and uh, under the effector section I want to set the random mode uh, to noise and what this will do is add some uh, movement and animation to those uh, secondary particles. Now it's uh, definitely too fast so I'm just going to lower the speed to maybe just uh, 15 uh, that's still way too quick so let's try maybe just uh, 10 and uh, let's tick indexed and uh, that just uh, slows them down a little bit and again this is just another way to uh, make your scene look a little bit more interesting i think that's still too fast so maybe i can go for a speed of just five and i think i could work with them um, 
with this. Another suggestion which I received from the Cinema 4D subreddit where I posted one of the first previews was to just also randomize the size and the position of the main particles because right now they're very uniform um, all the way across um, on all the, the numbers. So if I go to the main cloner, I can add uh, another random effector. Let's uh, go to the position here and just set this to maybe 5, 5 and 5. Um, so it's very subtle, but uh, it just adds, uh, it just makes it look a little bit more organic, I guess. But uh, maybe that's too much. Let's go for maybe just 3, 3 and 3. And I will also randomize the scale very, very slightly. And uh, it just makes it look a little bit more random. Okay, so that's the animation finished. Uh, the look is very simple. We are going to just add a background object here. Create a new material for this and just uh, make it blue or any color that you prefer. Drop this onto the background and I'm going to get uh, a second material and just enable the luminance channel onto it and uh, drop this onto our clones. And when I render, it's going to look like uh, a 2D, uh, 2D shapes, something that might have been made in After Effects or something. Okay, so that's how the look is going to be like when we render. Now you've already seen this, so there's no need for me to render this uh, twice. Okay, so I have a feeling that uh, some of you guys might be interested in how I created this uh, other look. So let me show you. In Cinema 4D, I basically took the final scene, like the one you have just uh, created following this uh, tutorial. And then let me show you what I ended up with after a few minor adjustments. So this is it right here in, uh, in Cinema 4D. And uh, all I had to do for this was uh, add in a meta ball uh, onto the cloner. So make a cloner the child of the meta ball. And uh, I've left the whole value at 100%. The editor and render subdivision are both set to 5 and I've got exponential fall off ticked. And then I just added an extra hypernerbs effect to uh, just uh, make that surface look as smooth as, um, as possible. Another difference is the way the animation occurs. Uh, you can see it's not springy and that's because I changed the delay effector mode from uh, spring, which gives us this bouncy look, to the blend effector, which uh, kind of eases uh, as it morphs um, from one number to the to the next. So it's a less erratic uh, kind of animation that just looks more smooth. And um, I had to create a very simple material to apply onto the metable and the hypernerbs. And uh, this was just a black texture with um, blue in the reflection and some Fresnel enabled and a really sharp highlight. And then to get the reflections, I used uh, an image of a nebula that I found on Google. And uh, this is it right here. Uh, the image looks like uh, like this. So that's it. Um, and then all I had to do then was uh, go into After Effects and just apply uh, a few particle effects using a trap code particular and then some uh, color grading using magic bullet looks. So uh, that's it for this uh, tutorial. Um, thank you once again for tuning in and I hope that you learned something new. Um, I really had a lot of fun experimenting with, um, with this one. So uh, I hope the next one will be just as fun and I will see you then. Bye.